Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today I will be listing my top 10 reasons to play Guild Wars 2 in 2017. Also note that I really like all of these things about the game, so it was really hard to put them on a list. So you should know that even though something is low on the list, they are still great features. Number 10. Alright, starting off with number 10 is the actual leveling in Guild Wars 2. Or more that it is not linear at all, which is great. When you are leveling and getting your characters up to level 80, there are just so many things to do. Meaning every time you level up a character, you will have a completely different experience. I also found the leveling to be quite enjoyable, after realizing that you are not supposed to go anywhere. You can just go wherever you want, as long as your level is high enough, of course. But there are so many games out there, especially MMOs, that you have to go a specific path all the time to progress, but Guild Wars 2 isn't like that. I mean, there's just no place where you have to go. The game doesn't force you to go in a certain direction. Number 9 are the world bosses. So world bosses are basically these big boss battles that occur every once in a while, that tons of players work together to defeat the bosses. By defeating the world bosses you get some decent rewards, that you can either sell or keep. There are also a few events before the main boss event that you can complete for some more experience and karma or, and just some random rewards. Or actually, you have to complete these before the boss can even spawn. You really should be participating in these. There are so many players that just stand and wait. Don't do that. Help the event so that you can get some rewards. And it is really helpful. Like those uh, two to three or something uh, pre-events before the main events, th those actually give some really nice experience if you are leveling up. Anyways, one of the best things about the world bosses is that you can start doing them as, as early as level 15. Number 8. The community. So the community is overall quite nice. I think having a great community is really important for an MMO or, well, any game for that matter. If you need help with something, you can always ask questions in game, or on forums, or even in YouTube comment sections, and there are normally at least a few people willing to answer your questions. For example, every once in a while you will actually see experienced players advertising their dungeon party or whatever, that all beginners are welcome, or something like that. So you could see when joining the first dungeon, which is the catacombs, you could see some... Uh, you know, very experienced player saying that he's taking beginners on a first run or something like that. You will meet some truly nice people playing this game, that is for sure. Number 7. Edge of the Mist. In Edge of the Mist, or EOTM for short, you play in one of three teams and battle against other players, you capture objectives and complete events. By participating in EOTM you get some nice rewards including experience, karma, coins, random loot and <laughs> much more. Normally you want to find a commander and just follow his or her directions to be as efficient as possible. I personally find EOTM to be quite relaxing, just following someone and completing some events and killing some stuff. It's a nice distraction that still rewards you nicely. Number 6. Dungeons. Well, they are like most dungeons in other games. You team up with up to four other players to fight monsters and bosses in an instance area. It's as simple as that. Each dungeon have a story mode, which normally is the easiest part of the dungeon. Once you have completed the story mode, you can do the regular one. And uh, each dungeon has three to four different paths. Paths are basically just different objectives in the dungeon. And, you know, just different ways... Uh, of going into the dungeon. You choose a path early on once you've joined the dungeon basically. So they are just different ways of going about in the dungeon. Keep in mind that dungeons can be kind of difficult in the beginning if no one in party knows what to do and or have low leveled gear. So before going into dungeons I would recommend getting the best gear that you can currently equip. And look up a build guide. It will really help. The first dungeon unlocks at level 30 already. Number 5. Elite Specializations Alright, this is one of my favorite features of Heart of Thorns. The elite specs completely change how your character plays and feels. Or your profession, I should say. Currently each class have one elite specialization each, but with the upcoming expansion they will get one more each. For example, the Elementalist unlocks the Tempest Elite Specialization, which allows them to overload their attunements, wield Warhorns, and give them access to some shouts. This greatly changes how the class plays in both PvE and PvP. Normally I find the elite specs to be a lot more fun to play than the regular version. 
The one da downside though is that you have to buy the Heart of Thorns expansion or the upcoming Path of Fire expansion to be able to unlock elite specs. But those expansions offer so much more anyway, so they are anyways worth buying. Number 4, the story missions. I like the stories in Guild Wars 2 a lot. The way they are told is a bit different than other MMOs, in the sense that most of the dialogue is actually voice acted, and not just in plain text that you have to read as in some other games. The voice acting is quite good for most characters, the writing is good, and there's a ton of lore in this game. You also get to choose different paths or whatever. And I think that everyone should play it through their personal story at least once. Number 3. The classes, or professions as the game calls them. There are 9 classes in Guild Wars 2, 8 of which you can play without spending any money, which is awesome. Each of the classes play very differently from each other, and to be honest, very differently compared to other games that have equivalent classes. For example, the ranger doesn't just stand still with a bow, sure it can have both a bow and a short bow, but the class can also equip swords, axes, torches, great swords and so many more weapons. Rangers also have access to pets, which are various animals or monsters or whatever that fight alongside you, each with their own special abilities. You don't really find that in other games. Also none of the classes in Guild Wars 2 are race or gender locked, meaning that you can pick any class with any race. That is something you don't see that much anymore. So you can be a Nasora, which is the smallest class in the game, and pick the warrior class. Number 2. Fractals of the Mist, or just Fractals, which is what I will be calling them. So Fractals are basically dungeons. You still play with up to four other players, but the main difference is that Fractals have four different tiers. So tier 1 is easiest, tier 2 is harder, and so on. You also have to be level 80 to start doing Fractals. So the Fractals offer greater rewards, such as Ascended Equipment, which is the best gear in the game, obviously. Many say that fractals are harder than dungeons, but I personally think that tier 1 fractals, at least up to level 20 or so, are a lot easier than dungeons are. Nevertheless, fractals are very enjoyable and rewarding to complete. And I can only speak for the lower tiered fractals, but they also tend to be a bit shorter than dungeons, so you can complete many fractals in a short amount of time. Also, fractals are great to get some gold and, you know, just ascended equipment, you know, rings. Number 1, the Path of Fire expansion. One of the main reasons to play Guild Wars 2 in 2017 is because soon a new expansion will launch, meaning so much more content will come into the game, and with more content being released you will of course have more things to do. And with more content there will be many more players either coming back to the game or even new players joining. Some of the things that will be released with the Path of Fire expansion are the new elite specs for every class, 5 new huge zones, new story missions, and much more. 2017 is a great time to come back to the game, or even join it for the first time. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.